Welcome to Faith Walk, another edition presented by Church Street Church of Christ, Lewisburg, Tennessee. My name is Don Ledford, and it is a privilege and honor to visit with you. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, there is a verse that's uh, always been intriguing to me, and I find the, the comparisons that the prophet Isaiah uses uh, are interesting. And I wanted to share some of those thoughts with you in the next few minutes. First of all, in Isaiah 40, the children of Israel are in uh, captivity with the Babylonians, and, and they are about to be released from captivity. And in this particular verse, uh, Isaiah is exploring the uh, mystery of God, uh, the majesty of God, God supreme, uh, describing those, those uh, traits about God. And of course, we all know that Isaiah is speaking by inspiration. And, and the verse that uh, is particularly intriguing to me is verse number 31 of chapter 40, and it reads as follows. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You know, as, as we go back to uh, Genesis and look at creation, we see on the fifth day that that God created the birds of the air and, and the fish in the sea. And as we consider this creation, uh, out of all of the animal kingdom, uh, Isaiah writes by inspiration that uh, about eagles and a comparison with eagles. And I got to looking at that and uh, thinking about the eagle, and of course, it's our, our national symbol, our national bird, and we see it on various and sundry uh, documents that per pertain to, to government. And, and certainly it is a, a noble animal. And as I thought about that, then there are things about the eagle that make it unique as we compare it to other animals. Let's look at a few of those, and, and perhaps we can all uh, see a lesson that will help make us a better person in our service to God. First of all, eagles fly alone and at high altitudes. Uh, they don't small, fly with sparrows or ravens or any other small birds. Uh, they are unique in that uh, they stay to themselves. Uh, so what is the meaning of this? Uh, I, I think we can uh, see that we should stay away from narrow-minded people and those that would bring us down. And obviously, uh, we are known by the company that we keep. Uh, Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Another thing that's unique about uh, eagles is that they have a very accurate vision. Uh, it has been estimated that eagles are able to focus uh, on a prey or, or prey on another animal up to five miles. Uh, that's astonishing when one thinks about uh, the ability to focus and to concentrate specifically on an object from that distance. The lesson for us is that we need to have a vision and remain focused no matter what the obstacles are and we'll succeed. Peter uh, gives some advice in the fifth chap first Peter fifth chapter eight verse, be vigilant for the the devil is like a lion and uh, roaming trying to consume us. So we, we need to be vigilant in our service to the Lord and be focused. Another unique characteristic about eagles, eagles love storms. And the reason they love storms is that they fly above the storm. 
Uh, they find the wind stream, get above the cloud, and they absolutely get excited when, when this opportunity presents itself. It's able to lift it. Uh, its body weight, it's uh, higher than any other bird. Uh, during storms, all other birds uh, seek shelter in trees and bushes and those types of things, but the eagle uh, goes above the, above the storm. Uh, eagles uh, face challenges head on. That's our lesson. We need to face challenges head on. And as Paul wrote to the Philippian church in chapter 3 and verse 14, I press toward the goal to win. Another thing about eagles that's interesting, uh, they always test the commitment of their mate. Uh, and it's also estimated that uh, eagles uh, mate for life, and if one of uh, the eagles uh, happens to die or something of that nature uh, where one of them is destroyed, uh, the, the other mate might find another mate, but eagles as a general rule mate for life. Uh, as we think about this commitment, the uh, Eagle makes uh, a, if you will, a wedding ceremony out of their mating. They test one another. They fly very high in the sky, and one may, the female will drop a twig or something uh, out of their mouth for the male to catch. And this is done over and over and over uh, before the the object uh, hits the ground, and they may do this for hours, uh, but it tests one's commitment uh, to the other. The lesson for us in, in our private life, in our service to the Lord, uh, we should be committed uh, to, to our cause, to the effort that we uh, have attached ourselves to. Galatians 6 and 9 Paul tells the Galatian churches, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Very important lesson for us to learn. Eagles prepare for training. Uh, they uh, allow the, the young uh, eaglets to stay in the nest for some uh, 10 or so weeks. But from the time of their hatching uh, until they leave the nest, <clears throat> the process for training begins. And very soon after the uh, hatchlings are uh, uh, available to grow, uh, the eagles will begin making the, the eagle's nest less comfortable for the hatchlings. They'll, they'll throw, uh, pull out the feathers and the, the soft grass and all of the things that make it more comfortable in order to train that young eaglet for uh, the future. There is a lesson for us in that we need to train ourselves and also our children. Ephesians 6 and 4, uh, verse 4, Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Last but not least, a unique characteristic about eagles is that when they grow old, uh, they become weaker and uh, are not able to uh, do some of the things that they once could do. Sound familiar? But they don't give up. Uh, what the eagle does is that they isolate themselves. Uh, they go through a molting process, and many times uh, this process, they'll pluck all of their feathers themselves. Uh, they will uh, work on their beaks and their claws. Uh, and, and this is a bloody process in many cases. Uh, and what the, what the uh, eagle is doing is allow himself to rejuvenate, 
to grow, put up, to put on the new body, so to speak. The lesson we can learn is that we occasionally need to shed off old habits no matter how difficult things might be or burden us, but we should need to get rid of old habits that cause us or hinder us from serving the Lord to a greater uh, ability. Ephesians 4, 22 through 26, Paul tells the church at Ephesus to put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life. Put on the new self created in the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. What a lesson we can learn from nature if we will only look. What a lesson God has provided us through all of the things that we're surrounded through his creation, not only in his spoken word, but in things that we come in contact with every day. Would you join me in prayer? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace. We do thank you for your instruction to us that comes in many ways. It comes in your spoken word. It comes in the nature and the scenery that is around us. All of these things remind us, Heavenly Father, of your power and your presence. Thank you, God, for loving us, for, for, for providing for us on a daily basis. Oh, God, we pray that we can take the lessons we learn from you and apply them to our lives and be better servants for you. Again, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our nation, bless those who are sick, Heavenly Father, we pray that we can be of greater service to you as we live every day. Father, we offer you the glory and the honor, and we offer this prayer in your Son's name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hope you have a great rest of the day, and may God bless you all.